Hello again! This is Bookshelf Tour, episode number three, manga bookshelf, shelf number three. So, here we go! This shelf is dedicated to everything clamp, and there's some overflow on the shelf above that, but I'll show you in a minute. Um, yeah, I'm not even sure where to start. Oh, wait, well, let's start with the non clamp item that shouldn't be up here at all. So, Otomen. Oh gosh, read Otomen. It is so funny, it is amazing. It's shoujo, there is comedy, and basically it's about this boy who, when he was young, his father told his mother, I have to admit something to you, I've always wanted to be a woman. So his father leaves them, and the mother goes crazy, and she insists that the boy, who is, where is he? Not this one, Asuka, insists that Asuka has to be the most manliest of men ever because she just can't stand the idea that he would become like his father. Well, in reality, Asuka likes cooking, and he likes knitting, and he likes doing things that, you know, in society would be considered girlish, but he has to hide all this stuff from his mother. And eventually he meets this girl, Ryo, who turns out was raised by a single father because her mother died, and she was taught martial arts and all this stuff, so compared to Asuka, she's very boyish. So they fall for each other, and hijinks ensue. This, this is Tenomine, Asuka's rival, or self-proclaimed rival, because Asuka really does have no idea what, what this guy is talking about. He is my favorite, and if you haven't caught on yet, cool Megane character, same as Kyoya from Oran High School. Yay, obviously I have a type. So now finally to the clamp. Oh wow, there's so much clamp. and. Word of warning, Clamp has a tendency to not finish things like X1999 or Legal Drug <laughs> or they will just end on the most heart-wrenching of heart-wrenching places as in Xholic. When you find out what's really going on at the end of Xholic, you want to break down into tears. It's ridiculous. And then there's Tokyo Babylon where they take your heart and they rip it out and they stomp on it repeatedly. And then they take this and they send it to X1999 because you find two of the characters from this in there and they absolutely kill you. They destroy you. They should never ever be allowed in the same room as Kaori Yuki because if they are allowed, everything's over. It's over and there will be no more manga because I will refuse to read anything ever. So let's just start with Wish, which you would think is probably the sweetest, cutest of all of their stuff. That's probably not true. I'm pretty sure there's something dark and emotionally <laughs> um, debilitating in here, but uh, in general, this character is adorable. I mean, look at him, he's so cute. It's okay, so Wish. <sighs> Kobato, which is sort of in the same vein as Wish and actually includes uh, that angel character you just saw, but in a different reincarnation. So. Oh, clamp. Oh, clamp in your reincarnations and multi-story things in the- yeah. Anyway, clamp tends to take a lot of their characters and reuse them in other series, so it's like one giant clamp universe in a way. This especially, especially happens with Exholic and Subasa. Subasa is the holy cow, the big daddy of crossovers, okay? So in Tsubasa, everyone crosses over. You've got Cardcaptor Sakura, who is one of the uh, other series, Cardcaptors. Um, these two characters are part of that. This is their alternate selves in the multiverse where you can access all the clamp universes ever. So yeah, Tsubasa, which is, by the way, very good. I don't have all of the copies. I ended up having to read the second half of the series from the library because I just couldn't afford to buy them all at that particular time. So one day I'll catch up. Exholic is directly, directly linked in to Subasa. So you can read them separately, but when you read them together, they make oodles more sense. So let me just grab these, pop these off, and okay, Gate 7. You probably saw Gate 7 in my July-August haul. The art is beautiful, and there's a lot of comedy, and it's really good. It has a lot to do with historical figures, 
and Oni, and I'm not sure how that works. No, like, check this out. This guy is, like, the bad dude. He's, like, an angel, but that's Clamp for you, because Clamp takes the sweetest, prettiest character, and they're not what you think they are. So, that reminds me of Monster, because the prettiest character in Monster is also a baddie. Um, Men of Many Faces. This one's super cute. So, oh, sorry about that. So, Men of Many Faces, Clamp School Detectives. Okay, Clamp School Detectives. There's an anime series about this, and it is so ridiculously saccharine. So saccharine, you guys, but it's fantastic. So, Clamp School Detectives, Man of Many Faces, Clamp School Defenders Dukleon, and Paranormal and investigators, because they're also apparently from the clamp school, these are all like one big thing that's all going on on the clamp school at the same time. So I have not read the three paranormal investigators books, but I will, especially now that I remember I have them. And I like how one of them is totally water damaged. That's not my fault, I had to buy it that way, it was the only place I could find it. So, um, I believe I have read Duke Leon, only I don't remember what happened, so we're going to read that one again. These two are very close together, because as you can see, this character is this character. So in this book, he stars, whereas in this one, he's one of three, okay? And these characters right here, these three boys, show up in Clamp X 1999 as grown-ups. Oh my gosh, it's really just ridiculous. The way they show up and it's like, ugh, why are you here? This just means that everything in Clamp is totally connected forever. Ski, which is probably my least favorite of the Clamp series, just because I had a hard time figuring out what they were doing. The art is very, very different, which in and of itself isn't a reason not to like it. Um, I still enjoyed it, it's just different. So I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be more subtle. Uh, story-wise, but I didn't fully understand it. Miyuki-chan in Wonderland, they just take this girl and they throw her up in Wonderland and they give you things like this with the queens of various places and yeah! This is basically a ridiculous dress this girl up in lingerie book, I don't know. The one I love also not my favorite, but aren't those kittens super cute? As you can see, I don't really get into this really like girly, like, serious girly stuff. If it's gonna be girly, it needs to have comedy. The most, the majority of these things that have like girly colors or or pictures on them are usually comedies. So stuff like this isn't really for me. But I read it anyway because it's clam. And then you've got Legend of Chun. I'm sorry, I can't. If you want me to pronounce Chinese names, it's going to be really offensive, and I'm just not going to do that. I have read this. Again, I don't remember it. It probably has a connection with RG Veda, but I'm not sure. Maybe not, because this and this actually, I think, are based on two totally different uh, cultural stories. So uh, then there's, of course, like I've been saying, X-1999 about the dragons of the world and the dragons of heaven and their clash and how they're tearing everything up. And I don't know if you saw the giant wall scroll I have over here, but it's this character. And this is another one I need to read again. You guys, you see what I'm talking about? Do you see this horrible, like, awfulness that's just like death and destruction? What is going on? And it's sad. They just, they kill everyone in this series. Take what I'm saying with a grain of salt because obviously I don't really remember. I just remember one specific thing very, very clearly and it's heartbreaking, but I won't tell you what that specific thing is, of course, because you should go read it. But it's not finished, FYI. X1999 is not finished, so if you start it, do so at your own risk. When Clant finishes that, I'll be very excited. More You Kaiden, I have not read this yet. It's not technically a Clamp book, but it was drawn by a member of Clamp or someone who was a member of Clamp. So, yes. Tokyo Babylon. This is their ultimate mess with your emotions story. Seriously. Seriously. Come on, guys. Like, these covers look so innocuous, but I am telling you, I am telling you that. Oh, look! 
I'm telling you, it's so sad. Cherry blossom stained with blood. This is the most tragic, sad story ever. Uh, clamp. Those guys right there need to stop because it's just tragic. So if you read that one, just know you're gonna cry. You're gonna cry buckets. Then there's Okimono Kimono by Clamps Mokona. And uh, this is mostly a book full of kimono and the drawings that I think they used for various ex-holic uh, pictures. So it's super cool and I just love, love, love looking at it. But I guess I didn't really show you the awesome ex-holic artwork though. I mean, check this out. Check this out. Yuko is just beautiful. She's beautiful. And they just have loads and loads of good art. So this series is good. Here's the wish art book. Little wish art book. It's so pretty and watercolory. And I just collected so many art books when I was in animation school because, you know, inspiration. Clover. Clover also shows up in that um, Tsubasa series, but I never really understood what was going on here. It's very abstracted. Like, do you see how it's written? It's very different. So, while I enjoyed it, and it's really, really beautiful, I mean, it really is, uh, it was difficult for me to follow because it had a lot of abstracted stuff going on and that's not really what I read. Shirahime Sio, so the snow, I think it's snow goddess, maybe I'm completely wrong about that. This is also beautiful, also a more serious story, but you know, very pretty, very lovely. Chobits, all about the little robot girl who goes to live with this guy and yeah. Yeah, this, this series was another one where there were just loads and loads of costumes that were really beautiful, so if that's the sort of thing you like, costumes, super cute, go read it. It's also very sort of sad toward the end, but that's okay. Ray Earth 1 and Ray Earth 2, I have both of those. Um, one of the first appearances of Mokona. Uh, who I just saw. Where did I see him? Oh, there you go. Mokona. So there's a black Mokona and a white Mokona, and the white one's in here, and I believe there's a black one in Exholic, and then I think the white one ends up in Tsubasa. So, I actually have a black Mokona hat. Maybe I'll wear it for a video one of these days. I should have worn it for my intro and outro, but I didn't. So, this is not my favorite of the Clamp series, but they're still very good. Angelic Lair, which has to do with little fighting dolls. Little fighting dolls! So, good series. Legal Drug, which has to do with two guys who work at a, I'm not sure, a pharmaceutical store, convenience store, and they have this like after hours job to do other stuff. It's been a while since I read this, and since they haven't finished it, I can't really tell you what's going on. I just know that tattoos are a recurring theme, and both of these kids have real attitudes, so it's pretty funny. And here you go, aside from X1999, Cardcaptor Sakura was one of my first clamp in intro stories. So this is so cute, and I have the whole DVD series as well, even though I might be selling it soon, I'm gonna cry. Um, super cute, really good. Definitely, definitely, definitely plays into Tsubasa. So my recommendation is if you read Tsubasa, to at least read this one and Exholic before you read that one. Or you know what, just read Tsubasa and then go back and read all these and you'll be like, holy cow, now I know what you're talking about. Uh, this was the second half of uh, Card Card Captor Sakura. This was Master of the Cloud. So these were the original Tokyo Pop editions. Um, and then they became this. So. Just as a little flip through, you can see kind of what it looks like. It's very, very cute. But a lot of stuff happens here. So it's cute, it's emotional, it's funny. 
So it's sort of the epitome of the kind of manga I like. Cute, serious, funny, thoughtful, you know. So it's got, it's got depth. That was shelf three, guys. See you for shelf four. Bye-bye.